This morning we're going to minister to you on times of refreshing. How many could use some times of refreshing? <laughs> Here's what I know. Hell has been fighting and uh, Satan's coming at you with everything in the arsenal. It's not, it's, it's not just one thing. It's not just another. It's everything. How many, how many know what I'm talking about? And that's, that's a good thing to note because that's the barometer if you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. If hell is leaving you alone and nothing is happening and you're not being under that attack or manipulation, there's no frustration, there's no issues going on, that's when I become worried. Because if I am doing what God has commanded me to do, if I am sharing the gospel, if I'm ministering, if people are coming to the Lord, if ties that bind are being broken off, people are being set free, then Satan is coming after you because you are a threat to the corridors of hell. That you're setting the captive free. That you're leading people to eternal life with Jesus. So, the other thing is that Satan knows the prophecies that are in the word things that have been spoken over this house, he knows that this people and the people that are called by his name in the end days are going to carry a great anointing. That revival and the revival fire is going to sweep the nations. And where does the revival begin? Somebody help me out right here in my own heart. And so there's been a number of things that have been coming to you, and that is preparing, preparing your heart, preparing your life, preparing your family, getting your house in order, getting things set aside so that when the heavens open, that he's able to rest upon you, that you have prepared the vessel to carry the holy. Are you still with me? And so as, as those things have been taking place, we get, we get wore out. We get tired. We get, how many have been in the battle for a while and it just seems like, and it hits you and you're saying, again? <laughs> what next? And, and so when those things are in that place of being overwhelmed and you're being pressed in, I, I, want, you to, I want you to understand that God not only is with you in the battle, He's given you the weapons of warfare. Listen to me, that he gives you times of refreshing. He gives you hope. He gives you help. He gives you strength when you need it. At the moment that you need it, that's when he shows up. That's when his provision is released. Not before. All of us was like, I would like to know what's going to happen. I would like to have forewarning. Like Peter did. Jesus told him, Satan wants to sift you like wheat, and he's coming after you. And Peter said, I'll never deny you, ever. I will die. My life will be forfeit before I, and Jesus said, before morning, you're going to deny me three times. He had, he had, how many would like forewarning when you're going to mess up? I mean, you, you wake up in the morning and there's an email from God. Okay, today at 11.58, you're going to mess it up. So be watchful. Pay attention. Okay. <laughs> that would help, but it doesn't work like that. Huh. And so we walk through things and we go through situations and circumstances. We're overwhelmed and, and the, enemy, the enemy presses in. But today... I want to give to you some very specific things that God does and is doing right now and is available for you to receive times of refreshing. That sound good? How many could use a little bit of help in every area of your life? I remember something that the generation of my parents and my mom would make a statement, especially after there was a little bit of chaos 
There's, I have one brother and three sisters. There's five of us kids. And we were all angels, so I don't know why, why the things would happen. You know, I think somebody else must have been doing some stuff to make my mom overwhelmed like that. But I, I would remember she making a few statements. I'm sick and you, you grew up in the same house. Okay. <laughs> I've had it. I remember that. I've had it up to here. And I've, and I remember learning a valuable lesson one day when she said, I'm sick. And I, I, and I offered to finish the statement and tired. And that was, that was not the right thing to do. And my, my mom did a tremendous, wonderful job raising her children and her, not only do we know the Lord, the three of us are in ministry and, and all of us serving the Lord in, in a capacity. And that is, that is a powerful statement. But I know that there are times that we're trying. I know that there were times that were difficult. And, very, and all of us have walked through those things. Are you with me? All of us have gone through very specific trials. And you might be in the throes of it right now. And you're here this morning and you're saying, man, if I don't get some help, if I don't receive some help somehow, I don't know if I can make it to tomorrow. I don't know if tomorrow is worth living for. And I want to give you some hope. I want to give you some help that is found in the Word of God and the provision of the Holy Spirit that would speak into your life, that would quicken you and anoint you and give you not only the moment's hope, but a future and a hope. Someone say amen. A future and a hope. Turn with me to Acts chapter 3, and this is the Word of God that will speak to you, that will encourage you. Acts three nineteen, <clears throat> verses 19, the chapter is 3, the book is Acts. Repent and turn to God. So your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Times of refreshing. So the God has in store for us that moment of being refreshed, renewed, strengthened, revigorated. I like that. You know, one thing that I was I noticed as a growing up many, many years ago, they sold a product. And it was called Calgon. Some of you laughing. Calgon, take me away. Was the slogan there on the television commercial. And the mom, and I can picture this. The mom, she was, she had filled up, it was, it was bath salt or bath soap suds. And she'd fill up the bathtub and soap with suds would, and she'd slide into the bathtub. And she was just in this place of nirvana. She was in paradise while the rest of the house was burning down and the kids were killing each other. You know what I'm saying? And baseballs were flying through the window and all this chaos was going on. And she was just in this place of perfect peace. Now, I don't think that that will work unless you're snorting the stuff. I don't, I don't think that, that there is, I don't think there's any bath salt. Come on, help me out. I don't think that there's something in this world. Even though there's times we've tried and we've tried things to ease the pain. We've tried things to manipulate our own emotions and our feelings to take us to that place where we have gained a moment of rest. I gained a moment of peace. Huh. But how many have noticed that when we have done that on our own and we have self-medicated or we have pressed into some type of emotional help that is found in a pill or found in a bottle or found in a syringe, by the time you come back to reality, those problems have not gone away. They've gotten worse. And that frustration is still right there. And the heart is just as heavy. And the hurt is just as real. So this morning, I want to give you some real hope and real help. That is going to give you the ability, ha, like Calgon, to be able to be taken away. Amen. Now, I know some of you are thinking, Calgon, how do you spell that? It's worth a shot. 
Well, first of all, you must understand what you need. Turn to your neighbor and say, what do you need? What do you need? Do you know Jesus knows what you need even before you ask? That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. He said that he knows the need even before it was spoken. So he knows your need. And he knows what you need of. He is the one that created you. He is the one that focused you. He's the one that puts you together. So he knows what you need. He knows why you need it. And he also has that thing that's going to meet your need. And to be able to release that. Because it's not necessarily just what you need. is when you need it. Timing is everything with God because it's more than just about me. It's my life is more than just what's going on in my heart, in my life. God is going to meet my needs, but he's going to do it in a way that it's going to bless and bless others because he uses every situation what the enemy meant for evil. God meant it for good. And he turns it around and not only turns it around to build my faith, but in that same situation, in that same place of darkness, he uses it to encourage and bless others. And so I need, to, I need to understand that even though I've been petitioning him and I'm asking and he knows what I need and the moment, the moment I requested it, he heard that and he's releasing the answer, but sometimes it takes a minute. Sometimes it takes a little while because the work that is needing to be done is deep. It's profound good friend of mine that was healed of lymphomic cancer. And how he was healed was over a period of time. And this is his own testimony. This is what God spoke to him after a couple of years that went by and it took a couple of years for him to get to that place of complete healing where there was no more cancer in his body that lymphatic lymphoma was gone. And this is one thing that he said in his own proclamation, because the doctor sent him home to die. The doctor said, no more we can do for you. And God began to do a work. But he said, and he proclaimed, huh, if God would have healed me in a moment, I would not be serving him. Because God used the cancer to get me back to where I needed to be to get my life right. Because there was so much more than the sickness of cancer. There was some serious issues in my life that God had to deal with, had to bring healing into my soul, into my mind. There were addictions and there was chains that needed to be broken off. And so this was a process, and he talks about the process. Are you still with me this morning? So God is bringing that provision of help and hope, and I, I thank God for the instantaneous healing. I like it when he just goes, boom, and everything's made right. He's done that for me many times. Many times that he has instantly healed my body, instantly delivered me, instantly opened the door and provided. Many times. I like that. That's my nature. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm rolling through McDonald's and I'm there at the, at the window and I'm telling that, I'm telling who's ever on the other side of that speaker that I want a number one, a medium size and a Coke to drink. And I'm rolling around the side of that. And some of you saying you need to back off on some of that. Okay, diet Coke to drink. And I'm rolling around the side and I see that there might be one or two people ahead of me. And, I, and I'm wondering, what are they doing? I didn't know you could take out a loan at McDonald's. It's McDonald's. I like it when I'm rolling around and there ain't nobody ahead of me and they got the, they have my food hanging out the window. You know what I mean? I'm just, boom. here we go. We like it quick. We want it now because that satisfies quickly. But God has timing. Someone say timing. God has timing, very specific things that he wants to do. And he wants to do something more than just a band-aid. 
and meet your immediate need. He's going to meet your immediate need, but understand, it's not only what you need, but when you need it. Hosea 6.3, Hosea 6.3, let us acknowledge the Lord and let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains and like the spring rains that water the earth. The former rains and the latter rains. Winter rains, spring. Here's, here's what's going on. And he's, he's talking about those farmers in Israel. And it's the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. Same today as his prophet was proclaiming. As Hosea was proclaiming. The same thing is going on. They have to have the early winter rain to soften the earth so that they're able to open it up and to plow it, to disc it, to plant. If they don't have the early rain, the former rain, then they're unable to even put seed into the ground and it will, it will never come to fruition. And so they're able to plant and that seed begins to grow because it's been watered but then the heat of the spring and early summer come. And that springtime, it is so necessary for the latter rain. For if the latter rain does not take place, then it will wither and die. And just as God is saying, he will supply the former and the latter rain. He will provide for you the beginning and the end. He will minister to you as what he started, and he's able to complete it, what he's begun. And what I'm telling you and what I'm encouraging this morning, when you need his help, not only is it the beginning of your need, he carries you all the way through it, and then he finishes it and causes his glory to rise up over you and the provision of his presence and the power of his glory then is manifest, and you have a testimony. My God is good. My God is able. I know that it's just a, for some, a fairy book story, but it's more than that to me because he showed up and he rescued me and he healed me and he delivered me. And that testimony carries so much weight to the non-believer. They are tired, listen to me, especially this generation. They are tired of fables and fairy tales. They will not be sustained by somebody's past religious experience. They want something that is real. They want something that is tangible. They want something that is life-changing. And that's where testimonies come in. And so I want you to look at that frustration and that place of pain, that place of poverty, that place of need, and just proclaim over it. All you are is a testimony in the making. Just say that over the situations in your family that the enemy has been attacking. All this is is just a testimony that God is putting together. Say this over your body and the attack that has taken place in your health. That he's been attacking you and he's trying to break you physically. All this is is just this moment that God is putting together a testimony. Because on the other side of this, there's going to be somebody that knows that my God heals, that my God delivers, that my God provides, and my God shows up. And he's more than just somebody's idea of a God. He is real. He is real. He is real. Ah. He also knows that you can't give what you don't have. You've heard me say... You can't lead where you won't go. You can't teach what you don't know. And now we're adding to that. You can't give what you don't have. And if you don't have the knowledge and the insight, the wisdom of the holy, how are you going to be able to minister? It's one thing to say, I believe my God can help you. And another thing is to say, I know my God can help you. And then you fill in the blank. The reason why I know it is because he's done it for me. That he has 
not just saved me, he has made me whole. And you know, when you are able to give that hope, it not only brings the sustaining power, but it begins to cause faith to rise up in the one that is struggling. So this morning we're going to talk about battling burnout. Because here you're not able to minister, you're not able to even enter into those times of refreshing if you're burnt out. I want to give to you some insight in the Word of God talking about re- to be able to recharge, refresh, and renew. Recharge, refresh, and renew. Anybody want to hear about that? Okay. Just checking. <clears throat> I, first of all, must understand the trichotomy of me. God created me in his image. We're going to talk about that part of you. But the trichotomy of man is body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. You all know what your body is, right? Somebody anybody <laughs> if you're sitting beside somebody <laughs> that they we talked about times of refreshing and they're they're you know resting before the lord pat them on the back and say you're somebody <clears throat> That's the flesh. <clears throat> That's the flesh. That's the tent. And uh, someone said, it's not necessarily the age, it's the miles. And I said, It's not only the miles, but it's the road that have been bouncing down. (laughs) That wear out this body. Uh, let Let me help some of you. How many of you this morning would say, man, I would like to have a redo, but with the wisdom that I have now, the wisdom that we have now, the decades of wisdom in a 20 year old body. Huh? We can get something done now. Because the want to's right there. How many of you, your brain writes checks your body can't cash? I used to. I was just explaining this to the prayer staff this morning. Said the older I get, the better my forgetter works. But I still remember some stuff. I still remember working in the oil patch in Wyoming. And pulling not just 24-hour shifts, but there's times even up to 54-hour. There was a 54-hour one time because the second crew was in a serious accident. They were all coming in a van, and we were back in Pumpkin Buttes out of Gillette, Wyoming, and they didn't make it for two days. And so the the driller said, anybody walks off the, the drill, anybody walks off the rig, then you don't worry about coming back, get another job because we're not shutting down. And so that was, and that's the way it was. And that's the way it was back in the 80s in the boom. And we just ran hard and did what we did and we're paying for it now. I wish I could find Exeter's address and write them and say, you need to pay me some more because I'm paying right now. And then sickness and disease hits this thing. Come on. They're, they're, the, the attack of the enemy seems to be relentless sometimes. And it's not just the viruses and the colds. It's, it's, it's all kinds of things that, that land upon us. And the enemy is attacking us in the body. And we get wore out and we get tired in the body. Come on. And we're just not feeling it. Sometimes your whole day, your whole goal for the day is I'm going to get out of bed so I can get to the fridge. That's the whole goal sometimes. Because you are that wiped out in the, in the flesh. Come on. 
I get that. I understand that that is part of the attack. And that is part of the help that God wants to give to us. And we are so thankful for the healing and the healing virtue. He said that he was wounded. And Isaiah prophesied this. And that's why when we have, this is a prayer focus over here. That's on our Tuesday night prayer. This is one of the prayer focuses. He said, and Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And surely the chastisement of our peace was on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say we could be. We might be. We are healed. Isaiah prophesied 600 years before Christ fulfilled that prophecy by being scourged at the whipping post before he was crucified. He paid for our healing. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say thank you, Jesus, for your healing? Thank you, Lord, for healing this body, this broken down tent. Ah, and Lord, would you give me some help? Sustain me until I see you. Give me some help and sustain me until I see you. I need some, because there's some things that was done to this body. I didn't have nothing to do with it. But there's some things that I did to the body. Dee -de -dee. <laughs> and then we need to, and I'm so glad for his mercy. Because in my, I'm talking about Jason now, so you quit looking at me that way. In my stupidity, I did some things that, you know, the Lord has mercy and he's helping me. Right. And so in the body, in the body, we need rest. We need healing. We need strength. And we need nutrition. Let's we'll say that again. We need rest. We need healing. We need strength and a little less McDonald's. Nutrition. So Lord, help me. And he'll heal your body. Just wave at me if he's brought healing into your body. If Jesus has supernaturally touched you. With that, you know, with that same hand, just give him thanks. Will you do that? Give him thanks. With that same provision, those of you that need healing, just lift up your hand and say, Jesus, I need your touch today. Lord, I need your touch today. Lord, that you'd heal my body. Heal these places that are broken. These places that the enemy has attacked. These places of sickness and disease. Jesus touches. One more time. And the second arena of the trichotomy of our being is our soul. And some would say, Pastor, isn't the soul and the spirit the same thing? I always thought the soul and the spirit was interchangeable. It's the same thing. But you see, in the Word of God, it talks about the soul and the spirit differently. In fact, there is a couple of scriptures, one scripture that talks about the soul and the spirit in the same scripture. And that is, have you heard that verse that says the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword, able to divide bone and marrow, spirit and soul. So our soulish realm as we look into the Word of God, the soulless realm is, is made up of our mind, our will, our emotions, our imaginations, and our memories. Those five things is what is housed in the soul. Amen. And just as this teaching this morning is the ministry of the word, we're going we're gonna to use those arenas so we can understand we need some rest. We need times of refreshing. We need some help in the soul. Come on. I'm a soul man. Never mind. I need some help in the soul. Come on. My mind needs some help. How many of you that had a little bit of attack in the mind area? Mind in the will or in the emotions? Sometimes my emotions is doing good, and then sometimes my emotion is just causing me some problems. Emotionally disturbed. <laughs> Never mind. And so this is the provision that comes into the soul. 
This is the provision that, that the Lord gives to you for times of recharging, refreshing, and renewal. First of all, we need to understand it's important to know how. Someone say how. We need to know how to deal with stress. Now, I know there's only five of us that said amen that have stress, but the rest of you might know somebody that is, has a little bit of stress and needs to know how to deal with stress, so pay attention. We need to know how to remove stress from our life. Do you know that God is only going to put so much on your plate that you can deal with? He's not going to allow you to be tempted above what you can withstand, and with that temptation comes a way of escape. That's the word. And so he's not going to put more on you than you can handle. So if there is so much in your plate and going on that is stressing you out, God did not give it to you. That means I picked up some stuff. That means I'm dealing with some stuff that's not God. But it's really good stuff, Pastor. I need to deal with this. It's really good things that I need to be worried about. No, not a single amen on that one. That's okay. <laughs> There's some stuff that really, I mean, if, if I'm not worried about it, who's going to worry about it? There ain't nobody else worrying about this. I really need to pick this up. And you see what happens, especially if we pick up offenses. Ooh, ooh, don't go there. We pick up somebody else's offense and then we're worried about it. Guess what? You're going to deal with stress. You're going to deal with the manipulation of stress that is not yours, that does not belong to you, that God did not give to you. And that's the reason why you're stressed. You need to remove those stressors. How do you do that? With an open hand. Jesus, I give it to you. I give this to you because I can't carry this anymore. I can't sleep. And you know, the mind, when it's in turmoil will manipulate your rest in the body. And your body, when stress is overwhelming you, all of a sudden now you're being broke down physically, which in turn affects you mentally. And that vicious cycle will continue until you, by your will, saying, God, I give it to you. Now, how many times you have to do that? It might be a thousand times in a day. Until you continue to give it to him. Lord, take this. Take this. I give it to you. I know that you have the abilities. You have the provisions. You have the help to be able to deal with it. And uh, see, I, I am seeing, if you can see what I see, I see situations and circumstances that are written on your face. All of you. When I begin to minister along these lines, there's not a single one of us that that one thing, and it might be more than one thing, it might be a hundred things, all of a sudden is coming up into your being and into your mind, and it is stressing you. In fact, some of you came in and you did not have that on your mind. Your mind was on Christ. Your mind was on the Lord. And then the pastor starts preaching about stupid stress, and now I'm stressed. I don't bring it up to cause you more frustration, but so that you know how to release it. I don't drudge those things up as a reminder of the pain, but so that you can understand how do I deal with stress? How do I remove it? A simple prayer. Jesus, I give to you, and then you fill in the blank. I give to you this child, this job, this financial burden, this brokenness in my body. I give it to you, and I release it to you. Jesus, release me. Bring help. Bring wholeness. And in that moment, he'll begin to wash over you. He'll begin to settle the storm. Because if you were sincere in giving it to him, he will take it. And he will release you. And his spirit will wash over you and bring a peace that passes understanding. Stressors in my mind. 
stressors in my family, in the job, finances, like I said. After we remove it by giving it to the Lord, we understand that we must realign. Say realign. Realignment means that you need to put things back in order, back in place. Make sure that your priorities are set in the fashion that God has called you to place and position them. Realignment means that the things that he put on your plate, that should be your focus and nothing else. The things that he's called you to, the anointings and the giftings and the callings, is always our passion. It is always what is first and foremost. And everything else needs to make sure it takes at least second place or be removed if God did not give that to us. So in that realignment that you oftentimes we need to ask again, Jesus, what it is. Lord, what is it that you'd have me to do? Lord, what do you want me to focus on? Lord, how do I move forward and begin to allow that release to take place? The second or the third thing is to replace. Sometimes we need to replace things. Sometimes we need to replace words that are coming out of our mouth. We need to bless the circumstance and the situation instead of cursing it. We need to speak life over the situation and the circumstances in those places of stressors. And here's what I mean. Some of you might be stressed out in your place of work, in your job. There might be somebody at the job and some situation at the job that is causing some stress. And you're saying, well, how, you want me to replace the, the job? If that's the Lord leading you, then yes. But outside of that, what you need to replace instead of bringing that condemnation that's coming out of you that is causing it to become even worse because you're walking into a place of pain. And if all you can say is this is really the worst thing that I've have to endure, God, will you ever get me out of here and continue to pour the problem and continue to release the pain that is coming out of you because you are ensnared by the words of your mouth. That's what the scripture tells us. And so he said that we need to bless instead of curse. And so we begin to speak life and say, well, pastor, I got to call it like I see it. Well, you're looking through the wrong lenses. You're looking through the wrong eyes. You need to see it as Jesus is. He sees it from above. He sees it from the perspective of change, of hope, of help, of healing, and the purpose of tomorrow. And so instead of beginning to tear it down, begin to build it up. Begin to make change takes place. Perhaps God has positioned you there as a light in a place of darkness. Perhaps God has put you there because there's somebody that's been praying, God, I don't know if you're real, but if you're real, send somebody to me. And in their darkest hour, he sent you to speak life and to bring hope and healing. And in that moment, you're replacing what the enemy sought for destruction. You're standing in the gap. No. Are you still with me? I mean, I, I know you're hanging on. In your soul, I want to talk to you about the power of happy. I want to talk to you about the power of joy. The power of pleasure. The power of happy. Someone say happy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy. happy. Okay. We want to be happy. We like joy. And here's how the mind works. You want to find that thing that brings you pleasure. The other day we were, my daughter, who's preaching this morning, I'm so proud of my daughter, proud of my son too, but my, my daughter was preaching there at the church at the refuge. She's children's pastor and she's preaching to everybody this morning. And uh, they're in North Carolina. And... Uh, for her message, for her sermon, she wanted us to dig up some old photos of when we took the kids, when they were uh, the third and fourth grade, right in there, to Disney World. They're in Orlando, Florida. That's before Disney went off the rails. So don't look at me that way. <laughs> That's when Mickey Mouse was 
Still cool, okay. She said, I want some pictures. She's, she was preaching, and I didn't get to hear it yet, um, along the lines of, of, of what it was as a kid and the thoughts and the ideas of, of Disneyland. And so we're running, and, I'm, and uh, my wife went through that. I went through all those same photos, and I couldn't find those, those photos. My wife did the next day, and she found them, and it was good. But we have these stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks, thousands of photos. And I'm looking through these, thumbing through them, and I'm remembering. It's brought back memories of all the good things, the times of blessing, different ministries that we were in, different people that we had connected with, you know, the pictures of the baptismals that we had, the, just the things like that, and the, the memories that came in. It, it, it brought me joy. Just as Pastor Larry was talking about a place of his previous ministry and, and going back and, and, and seeing uh, and renewing acquaintances and seeing old friends, and it brings joy. And so this is what I want to encourage you when you're weighted down in your mind. When there are things that are pressed in, the Lord has given us some instruction on how we're supposed to think. He said, to, we're going to need to focus our mind. And in Philippians 4.8, why don't you skip down there, Joe? Philippians 4.8, he said, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate. Someone say meditate. Meditate on these things. Think on these things. Focus on these things. Think about the things that bring you joy. Think about the thing. And, just someone, and it's so simple sometimes. So simple of the good things that God has given to us. How many of y'all have grandkids? Just wave at me, grandkids. How many, now, now I hope your children aren't here when I'm asking you this. How many really love your grandkids? How many of you said, I wish I would have started with grandkids? Some say that ain't possible. Ah. <laughs> they make me happy. They bring joy to Papa. We try to FaceTime our kids and grandkids in North Carolina every Saturday, you know. And what, what one of them does, it's usually it's one of the younger ones, they grab that phone from mom, you know. They start usually with, with my daughter, Danelle. And then she passes it off. And then that, that you know, eight, nine, ten year old, whatever one's grabbing it, and, and they take you for a ride throughout the house. And they got to show you stuff, okay? And I'm getting seasick, you know, because it's up and down and this and that. And, and, and so I just said, okay, I give the phone to rocks. Okay, you, I'll listen. <laughs> And that's exciting for them. You know, they get to share something with Papa and Grandma, and that brings me joy. And that is a blessing of the Father. That is God's blessing that he's, he's, he's released to us. And some of you are saying, well, I, I don't have kids or grandkids, or I don't, have, I don't have that relationship. Well, there's other things that God has given to you that has brought joy. You know, there's some adopted kids that God has given to me over the years, and I've ministered to them, and I've encouraged them, and it does well when I reconnect. And I was thumbing through those, all those photos, and I, I come across the number of times that we had those baptismal services in Cambridge, Idaho, and we didn't have a baptistry like we have here. We didn't have a baptistry in the, in the church, and so we, we had to either go down to the river or we went down to the reservoir. There's a big reservoir in the Snake River. And so, and that's the first thing. And my daughter and my son, I seen that baptism, was, uh, being baptized, you know, they were there running around and taking people down into the, into the, into the reservoir. And, uh, and the water's a little bit cold, but it was all right. And people are rejoicing. People are happy. And I remember the individuals that were being, the lives that are being changed and exciting times that God had given to us. And I remember those things. And I bless God. Brings back joy. 
I remember going back in my office and I'm filling out the baptismal certificate because on the Snake River, I'm saying this person was baptized in the Snake River in Hell's Canyon. I said, we got to find another place to baptize people is what we need to do. <laughs> so, and then, so from then on, we baptized them in the Weezer River, okay, in the Weezer River right outside of town. And I remember, the, you remember those things? And, and, and so the, those photos, but that brought back other memories that weren't in the photos and begin to think about all the good things that God had done for me, all the blessings. And that's what he's saying. Think on these things. Think on the things that I have done for you. Let him bring back to your memory how God has sustained you, how he has healed you, how he has provided for you, how he's brought you here today. And that begins to cause the will the mind and the emotions, those memories and those imaginations that the enemy would attack to be able to replace those things with the memories and even things today. Satan wants to give you the imitation. He wants to give you the cheap fake. But what God has given to you is life, the real joy, the real power of the peace that passes understanding. And that comes to focus your mind. You have that ability through your will to begin to focus your mind on what your mind has stayed upon and what you choose to think upon. He said to think on these things. The last thing there in the soulish realm before we do quickly, we're just going to touch on the spirit just in a minute. We're, I'm on the last page and someone said, amen. We need to understand the importance of capturing your imagination. I need to capture my imagination. I got a really good imagination. Can you imagine that? Some would say, man, I would like to be in your head just for a day. No, you would not. I'd like to give you this brain for a day or two, but 2 Corinthians chapter 10, look at this. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God of pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself in the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I want you to look at this again. Casting down imaginations. Everything that exalts itself in the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought. So I'm casting down imaginations so the weapons are not just pulling down strongholds. But it be able to contain and to make sure that my mind stays focused, stays upon Christ, and was not deterred and not goes down the rabbit hole of destruction. That dark place that causes me just to shrivel up and wish to die. That, that is the place that the enemy wants to drag you. He wants to manipulate, he wants to destroy you. But he said, You have the ability through the weapons that he's going to give you, that you have, to capture those thoughts and pull down those imaginations. What are some of the weapons? Weapons of my warfare. The Word of God, one of the most powerful weapons, the Logos, the written Word of God, and then the spoken Word of God, the Rhema. As you speak the Word of God, you speak that blessing over your mind. You speak it over the situations. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Ha, ah, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. And you can speak to that thing that is dis demonic and destroyed. And you can speak life into what the enemy had thought he destroyed. He thought that thing was dead and buried and it's sealed. But you got to understand, Friday night might be on you right now, but Sunday's on the way. The resurrection power of my Lord and Savior is still able to speak into your life. 
and you begin to allow those words come out of you and speak it what God is saying about the situation. I have come to set the captive free and that I have life and life more abundant. Now, my praise is another powerful weapon. I, I don't know how many times I've praised my way out of pain. I have worshiped my way out of the darkest attack. And sometimes I, don't, I can't find it in me to the want to, but it's not my emotions. I tell myself, this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna worship. I don't really feel like worshiping. I don't care what you feel. I'm, I'm having this conversation with myself all the time. Myself says, I don't really want to do that. And I'll tell myself, I don't care. I didn't ask you if you wanted to do it. I'm not feeling it today. I don't walk by feeling. Well, I don't have time. You're going to make time. And I'll begin to worship and I'll begin to praise. I'll begin to focus. I'll begin to trust him. I'll begin to take those weapons. I'll take the power and the presence of the Spirit of God that's welling up within me because through my worship, my faith is activated and my faith rises up and then the Holy Spirit is able to take control and I'll push past anything the hell has thrown against me. Because all of a sudden now, it's not me. It's the Spirit of the living God working through me. But I've got to take that first step. I've got to make that first proclamation. And that's the last thing, the last part of you is your spirit, your body, your soul, and spirit, your spirit. Your spirit is what is created in the image of God. That is the eternal part of you that is in his image. That is the part of you that has come to life. It once was dead in trespasses of sin and now has come to life in Christ. And this life that he now has given to you, you now live for him. Someone say amen. I now live for Christ. And that's a part of me that I have to choose to walk in alignment. I must choose to walk in the alignment. What alignment are you talking about? Galatians 5, 16, look at this. Last portion of scripture. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Paul tells us many times in another, other, in other scripture and other books, he ta talks to us about walking after the flesh. We walk after the flesh, we walk after the soul, we walk after the mind, the will, and the emotions, we walk and will fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if we choose to walk after the spirit, what did he say? If you walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What you will, you'll fulfill the spirit. The spirit part of me is what I need to make sure is in control of me. Not my mind, not my will, not my emotions. How many of you, your emotions ruled the day and it got you in trouble? Your emotions led you down the wrong road. Your emotions got you into a situation and circumstance and you had to ask God to bail you out. <laughs> but if I'm not walking in my emotions, my will, or what I think, but I'm walking in spirit, then Holy Spirit is speaking this to my spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to minister to you, to your spirit. Get this. If my emotions, if my soul is in charge of me, I'm walking after the flesh. My soul is in charge of me. Spirit, when he's trying to speak to me, he's trying to speak to Jason McMass, the, 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 one, the one that God has resurrected, the one that God has given eternal life, the part of me that is created in his image, that part of me that I want to walk in and of. If the Holy Spirit wants to speak to my spirit, he does not want to go through my flesh. Because if he goes through my emotions, my emotions might not be good that day. And so my emotions will skew and manipulate even the words of the Holy Spirit that is speaking to me. 
If I am mad and I am upset and I'm pouting and the Holy Spirit is trying to encourage me, all I'm going to hear is, I'm mad and I'm upset. And I will not hear clearly the voice of the Holy Spirit. If I'm offended, then I want to be offended. Then no matter what the Holy Spirit says, he might say something through somebody. He might say something in the still small voice. He's trying to get a hold of me. But if I am in the flesh, I'm not going to hear clearly. And so I've got to determine I'm going to walk in the spirit. That part of me that has been rejuvenated, brought back to life. That part of me that is created in his image, my spirit, my spirit. I need to walk after the spirit, the Holy Spirit and no other spirit. I have been manipulated by the demonic enough. I have been led down the wrong path in my life too many times. I have listened to the voice of the discouraging and the demonic and the manipulating too much. I need to hear with clarity the voice of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to listen to why things aren't going to get better. I don't want to listen to why things are just going to be, be no longer viable. I'm not going to listen to how hell has destroyed our lives and our nation and our world and how everything is, is going to be unraveled and destroyed. Uh, I understand prophecy and I know what's about ready to happen, but I choose to hear the Holy Spirit that says to us, my church is rising up in this end days and my beloved is going to put on garments of white and they're going to be filled with the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit and they're going to divide the darkness from the light and they're going to call those things that are dead back to life and they're going to heal the sick and they're going to cast out demons and they will do what I've called them to do. That's the voice that I need to hear. That's the voice that I need to be clearly in my hearing and in my mind. And so that's a choice. I've got to choose to walk in alignment. And that's when I have this discussion with myself. When myself says, I'm not feeling it today. My, myself says, There's, this is going to fail. You know, Azariah, when, when that voice would say to you that this Bible club that you're starting is not going to work out, nobody's going to come or everybody's going to make fun of you, that's the voice that you're not going to listen to. The voice that, Azariah, the voice that you are listening to is the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is, that is telling you, young man, that souls are going to be saved in Palisade High School, in the middle of school. And you're rescuing the perishing. That's the voice that you listen to. And all the other voices, uh, they can go talk to somebody else. Because <laughs> I'm not listening anymore. Could you stand with me this morning? Could you stand with me? And we'll bring this to a close. <clears throat> Pray for our students. As I just mentioned. They're starting a Bible club where they're going to meet for prayer and for the word during school. And I know that God has already opened that door and the blessing is going to be intact and good things are happening. The other thing that I want to encourage you is that guard your heart. Will you do that? Guard your heart. Because this is what I know is that when good things happening, the enemy tries to attack. And he tries to unravel what God is doing. And he'll bring distractions. And he'll bring confusions. And he'll try to bring manipulations. And he'll cause us to focus on everything but what God is doing. So guard your heart. Will you do that? Okay. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody standing next to you needs to hear you tell them, encourage them, and you tell them, hey, you got to guard your heart. Come on, tell somebody, you got to guard your heart. You got to make sure that your emotions aren't out on the sleeve, man. You got to make sure that you're suited out in the armor of God because it's coming. You think you're under attack now? Ah, enemy's going to try to step it up, but Jesus has given you times of refreshing. 
He's given you that provision to carry you through whatever you're faced with right now. For, for those of you that, with me, that we have some weight, we have some stressors, we have some things going on right now, put that in your hand, whatever it is. You just, just imagine there, just put it in your hand, whatever that stressor is right now. If you would do that, just, just exercise. Just humor me, okay? Play along. <laughs> okay, if I have to. I'm going to give you... In the physical, what you're going to do in the spiritual, okay? We're going to do in the physical, and you're also going to do in the spiritual, and there's going to be a release. If you would, not just go through the motions, but you would actually do this. This is how it's done. You put that stressor, you put that situation, you put that, whether it's your, 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 your body, your health, your finances, your relationships, whatever's going on, I want you to place it right there. And I want you to lift it up to Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Pray it out loud. Dear Jesus, I give to you this situation. I give it to you. I ask you, Jesus, that you would take it, that you would do what you do in this situation. It is yours. I release it. And I say, Jesus, take it from me and give to me your peace your provision, your hope, and your help. And in Jesus' name, I'm asking, if I try to take it back, smack me up in the head. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now give him praise. Come on. You might have to do that a thousand times. I mean, really give it to the Lord. And say, I am put it in your hands. I just give it to you, Jesus. And then ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct you. The next and the last prayer that I'm going to pray with you is that prayer of alignment. Because we've been drawn out into the flesh way too much. And we need to walk after the Spirit and no other Spirit. And this is just a simple prayer of alignment. If you would do that, put your hand on your heart if you want to understand this prayer of alignment. And you say, Dear Jesus, I'm asking for your help to walk after the Spirit. So I say to my body, line up underneath my soul. And I say to my soul, I say to my mind, my will, my emotions, my memory, and my imaginations, I say to you, soul, line up underneath my spirit, that part of me that God has created in his image. And I say to my spirit, walk after the spirit and no other spirit. And in Jesus' name, give me the strength to stay in alignment in Jesus name in Jesus name now give him praise one more time Amen. Hmm. so are you good to go some of you that that's going to sustain you and you're going to walk in that provision and you're going to walk in great grace and that 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 was a life changing moment and you're not going to have much of a struggle. Others, you're not going to get to the doorway and the enemy's already going to try to draw you back into the flesh. So you might have to walk through this a number of times because that weight and that situation is not just small, it's consuming you. But God did not intend for you to carry that, to deal with that weight and that stress all by yourself. He said, cast your care upon me because I care for you. All who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and you'll find rest. Everything that I've given to you today is found in your, your Bible and the Word of God. And I'm asking you just to allow the Word of God become life, wholeness and healing and help to you. So those stressors, those situations will not consume you doesn't mean that you have said, I don't care about this anymore. No, that the care is there. The, 
the prayer is still there, but the weight and the pain and the stress is no longer there. There's still concern and you're still going to move in prayer and you're still going to intercede like you always have, but you're not going to carry that stress that is overwhelming you, that is stealing your sleep, that is causing you the pain. And God is going to release you as he comes alongside, as you ask him to. Lift your hands one more time. I want to bless you out. Father in heaven, I thank you for these. You bless them coming in. Now bless them as they go out. Bless them in the city. Bless them at home. May your countenance shine upon them. I'm asking, Lord, that you would give to them the strength and the provision of your healing. That health and healing would rest upon them. Sickness and disease would be broken off. It would not come near them nor nigh their dwelling place. I'm also asking that you would provide for them. Lord, that you would open up the storehouse of heaven and rain down the provision. And according to your word, you said, give and it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I'm asking, Lord, that you would meet all of their needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, that they would not want for anything as they have been faithful. You are always faithful and you will do what you said you're going to do. I'm asking that you lead, guide, and direct them. Open doors that need to be open, closed doors that need to be closed. Go before them. Give them divine appointments and connections. That those that they come in contact with, Lord, would be drawn to you. That those that are sick are going to be healed. Those that are in bondage are going to be delivered. And those that do not know you be led to your saving power in eternal life. Lord, now you go with these. Rest upon them now. In Jesus' name, I pray. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Give him praise one more time. Thank you, Lord. Just to remind you, we will not have church service tonight. It's been dismissed for the holiday weekend. That you spend time with your family. As you go, find at least three people. I'll go ahead and make it five people. Hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand, and tell them, you are blessed beyond measure. Will you do that?